Hi, welcome to this double bill of a strange dream I had. Um, the first one, I wasn't going to tell, but as it's the only dream that I think I've had where it had some kind of, well, the whole reason why I recorded these strange dreams is because I thought, oh, maybe if they come true, whereas this one sort of did, in a way. Uh, so this one happened on the 15th of April, 2024. Um... On, on the Monday morning, and on the Wednesday morning, I got the call that my mum um, had passed away. <clears throat> and I don't usually, I mean, I dream about my house, you know, in Portsmouth, being in there a lot. I don't really have that many dreams about my mum, dad or sister. Um, you know, maybe I have the occasional ones, but not very many. Um, the house, and inside, yes, yeah, so often my dreams take place within that house for some strange reason. Um, so maybe they do appear, but um, it's not that many, so it's quite rare for me to have, especially with mum. And so I had this dream that um, it looked like the table in the living room that we had, the, you know, like it was a long table and the chairs, but they were like the bench chairs that you get outside, you know, little, like, like pews, like a long, long chair, but flat. And I was sitting on that, and Dad came, and he brought who he said was Mum. And he said, this is Mum. Um, I hadn't seen her for a little while in the dream, and um, you know, she looked, she was wearing a white uh, dress, and I think she had, like, spiky hair, I don't know what the hair, it was black, but I think it was dark, and she looked very white, um, mum did like me, I look quite white, I should look a bit reddish these days, because of the pressure, um, and she sat beside me, and she was speaking in, is either like a, it was Irish, it was an Irish limerick or an Irish poem, I don't know which, and I don't remember what she was saying, but it was like that. Um, that's why I did actually recount the dream, I think, to my video, I tend to make these like video diary type things, and I re when I recounted it, I recounted about the lady from Gogglebox, the Irish lady, um, Nutty, so I don't know why that, you know, maybe it was her, I was actually dreaming about, maybe I'd watch Gogglebox, because she's um, partly Irish. Um, or maybe she has a resemblance to mum, I don't know. Maybe a little bit. So, yeah, she's having me do that. And then um, I realised that, oh no, this, I don't think this is mum. You know, because I, I thought she looked similar, but no, this is mum. Dad, you brought me somebody else. And then in, in the dream, it was like he brought me, you know, that mum had either, was, was no longer with him. And he'd remarried and he was pretending this new wife was was mum. And then I got up and I was shouting at him. Uh, I was very angry with him. Why did you do this? Why are you pretending to bring mum to me when it's not? And it's another woman that you've married or something. And then I collapse on the floor. And I'm like having like a, a massive panic attack. And I'm breathing really heavy. And I even woke up from the dream at that point. And I could hear my breathing, breathing heavy in reality. And then I sort of slipped back into the dream of breathing like that. And then the dream ended because obviously that had woke me up. <coughs> and then, of course, two days later, she passed away. I wish I'd had that told my dad about the dream at the time. Because she'd been a little bit unwell. You know, I guess he was didn't want me to, to be worried about it, but she, he, didn't, he didn't expect anything to happen, you know, it was just like unwound, like being a bit more tired and not eating so much. Um, so yeah, it's really, because I told my wife on the Tuesday, was it Tuesday or? Maybe it was the Monday, I can't remember. So then when it happened, on Wednesday getting that call and telling her and like my wife had the same she had a sort of thing where before I got to tell her she was t uh, coming out after picking up the twins with Michelle and um, she was telling Michelle look at those clouds up there the way they were stacked and she said oh that that means someone's died and then 
I'm waiting to tell her that, yeah, my mum, she's yeah, been rushed to hospital. This isn't a good. So what's strange is that that dream is almost as if mum had come to me before she died, after a bit of a time. Or it was a warning to say, look, there's something here. I don't know. From like God saying, you know, this, you need to, maybe it was I was meant to tell dad that I had this dream and that was would have been for him to be able to say, yeah, mum's not been well, actually. Maybe you need to come see her. That's the problem with these things. You never know, like, what is the... You need to act upon things. Sorry, I stopped it there because I thought I heard someone on the stairs. Um, but there's no one there. It was just a creak. So now to the second dream, which I had this morning. This is probably based on... I, I read before I went to bed about the solar flare that's occurring on Friday and Saturday. You might see the Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights especially over Scotland, because of this big flare that's come from the sun that's coming to us and it may affect our uh, networks and things. I don't think anything's happened, not that I've seen anyway. So <clears throat> this may have inspired that dream, because in the dream, um, it's um, it is mum and dad and me and my sister. Um, I don't know if I heard Anarchy, and I don't remember Michelle, Aileen or Aidan, but it was us. We're outside, and I have a camera or a phone, I don't know which, and there's this event that's taking place, and it's like, um, I guess it's the flare coming down onto the ground, and I'm seeing, like, patches of grass, like, light up in fire, you know? And, you know, that's what I, we're sort of having to... I don't know why we're outside. We're outside, and I guess we're trying to get to safety, I, home, I guess. And... We're in this like this big field, and there's a tree, and in this tree, there's two, I think, is it men who are protesting, and they don't have any clothes on, and they're protesting about something, and I'm telling, get down, you know, the, the, this is what's happening, uh, you know, because I'm worried that they're going to get hit by the fire, and there's and it keeps coming like bits will hit the ground. I don't know, I don't actually see things hit the ground. I all I see in the dream is just like the 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 fire sort of spreading coming down and then spreading out on um, patches of grass and things. Um, I don't remember much more than that, but that was what I woke up with this morning of this sort of apocalyptic dream of, um, was there anything else? Of just like the world being set alight. I don't know if that's a HG Wells story, is it? <laughs> but yeah, that was it. Um, my boat was strange I had mum, oh, no mum was actually at home sorry, it was me, my dad and Karen, mum was at home and that's why we were worried about oh mum's at home, um, she may be worried she doesn't know what's going on, Did we? I, I, also there was a phone call, the phones, at one point we're in this house at the beginning, before we see the fire, sorry I forgot about that, at the beginning we're in this like cabin or whatever and the fo all our phones start ringing and it's bright red, it's like a national emergency. Um, and that's when we, I think we've known about something that was going to happen, but that's when we know all of a sudden when we come outside, that's when I see the patch of grass, and we're then going through this like foresty type area with a path. That could be the where we were in the, the St Mary's funeral, Kingston. It does actually have a sort of similarity now? I'm thinking about it, and we're thinking about Mum. You know, she doesn't know what's going to happen. She may be getting worried. We need to get back to her. That's, that was the dream. Take care, take easy, good rest, and peace.